Okay, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. This week is Xperia. Let's look at the new product introduction. Lady H Pick, what is it? Okay, this week from Xperia, we are looking at the NID5100. This is an ideal diode. I think this is the first ideal diode that an Xperia has designed. Uh, and I'm always into ideal stuff, so let's check it out. Um, so I won't say it's ideal, it's close to the platonic ideal of a diode. Um, but unlike diodes, it has does have like semiconductor inside of it, so it's limited. It can only run from 1.2 volt to 5.5 volts because it's like be powered, um, and it can do 1.5 amps. But it's basically you know what you consider a diode. It's um, you know no nearly zero reverse current, only um, forward conduction, only uh, positive voltage conduction, so it can do. Um, polarity protection for your circuitry without the heat and um, uh, forward voltage drop loss of your standard diode. Okay, diodes. You love them. I love them. So diodes, I think, are like the best semiconductor because um, first off, they're the simplest. You get some P-doped and some N-doped silicon you mash together. Uh, you got a diode. And then, you know, if you like tune it a certain way, you get LEDs. Um, and if you tune it another way, you get a, a light sensor. And if you tune it another way, you get um, a photovoltaic cell so you can generate power. Um, but most people use diodes, or at least I use diodes a lot in power supplies, as polarity protection. So this is like a, from an old design, the um, DC Borduino. And you see on the left, there's a DC jack, J1. And then it feeds into uh, IC2, which is a 7805, like a five volt regulator. So you have to basically give it nine or 12 volts. And then, you know, on the off chance that somebody happened to grab a negative uh, center power jack, you wanna make sure that you don't accidentally put negative voltages into your circuit because it will explode. You have to protect it with here a 1N4001. And these are like like, like the oldest diodes. Everyone's used these. Um, they're great because uh, they're very inexpensive, very common, and they're, they're available in surface mount too, but I, we happen to stop them in through hole. They can handle up to a thousand volts, although the 4,000 ones do 50 volts. They're often used for, you know, low voltage power supplies, um, half or full wave rectification. Um, and they have about, you know, one point, basically one volt forward drop, which means that, you know, from the input, the positive input to the output, there is a one volt loss. So if you had a 12 volt um, power supply, the other end would have 11 volts. Um, but sometimes you're like, well, I can't lose one volt. For like that 7805 example, it's fine because it's nine volts in, minus one volt is eight volts. And as long as you're above seven volts for the 7805, you're good to go. But um, if you're doing something that needs as you know, lower voltage, um, because maybe you have a, a tighter um, drop, maybe you have 12 volt to nine volt regulator, and so you, you can't, you, you can't really get to the 1.5 volts forward drop, especially at one amp. You can get a Schottky diode, and these are just the, the P and N junctions are tuned to give you slightly lower um, forward voltage drops. These still do one amp, but as you can see here for the um, 5817, you can have as low as uh, 0.5 volts. So it's you know, about half of the forward drop of the um, one in 4001, and uh, they can still handle one amp continuous and three amps peak. Okay, um, so we use diodes a lot. For example, this is the Trinket M0. And another usage is not just polarity protection for a DC input, but what we call like power supply oring, where you have uh, two voltages and you wanna basically instantaneously select between the two. In this case, we have VBAT, on the top left, which is our you know, light poly or alkaline battery input. And then we have VBUS from the USB port. Um, one is about four volts, 4.5 volts, and then the USB is about five volts. And then basically whichever one you have plugged in, either battery or USB, you wanna dynamically swap between the two. By using two diodes, um, the output is whatever is the highest of the two voltages, and that will be what feeds into the AP2112K. And um, in this case, the regulator is 3.3 volts and VBAT is nominally 3.4 and so, or 3.7. And so you only have, 
you know, maybe 0.4 volts, 0.3 volts of drop that you can allocate to that diode. Um, in which case, you could use something like the Nixperia PMEG uh, 2010, which at the bottom you can see has an even lower forward voltage. Uh, at one amp, it has a typical of 300 millivolts. So, you know, a quarter of the one in 4001 and maybe, you know, half of the um, one in 5817. Um, although it has slightly higher reverse current at 250 microamps. Still not bad, it's you know, a quarter of a milliamp. Um, but sometimes you want something even better. So you want you know, that kind of current capacity polarity protection, but you want it to be like 10 millivolts or, or five millivolts um, because you really don't want to lose that heat in that voltage, especially when you're talking about one amp. Um, now, now you're burning about like you know, a third of a watt um, especially if you have a small package um, that can get quite toasty. So, enter the NID5011. It's a quote-unquote ideal diode. Um, so you can use it as, you know, a plug um, polarity protection. And um, as long as your power supply is 5 volts, you know, 5.5 5, 5 volts or less. So it would be good for 12 volts, but it would be good for a 5 volt power supply um, or battery port. And you can use it in that case. You can also use it in that O-ring setup where you have a plug input um, or a battery and you put two of these side by side um, and now the output is whichever one is higher. So you, you basically have the equivalent of that diode um, setup, but with much, much lower forward voltage. So how much lower? Um, so compared to your Shockey diode, which has about 400 millivolts, Four drop, this one has about 10, 50 millivolts. And the reverse leakage is very, very low, 0.7 microamps, which is much smaller than Chalky Dots. Compared to that PMEG, remember that was about 250, typical. Um, so this is, you know, one four hundredth of the size. And uh, can handle 1.5 amps easily and doesn't get hot because it doesn't have that much voltage and um, dropping across the package. And, and the size of the package is a TSOP 6, it's quite small. Um, so compared to your Saab 323, which is kind of the standard size I use, it's not that much bigger. Um, and you get things like the status indicator output that lets you know when it's forward conduction mode. Um, you can see the circuit inside, you know, has a PFET, but you can't just use a PFET. It actually has a little bit more there to do the polarity protection and the um, reverse leakage protection. So it's more, you know, it's basically kind of the best of both worlds. You get the low voltage dropout, low uh, low voltage dropout, low power of the PFET style of polarity protection, but you also get really excellent reverse current protection um, as well. So check out the NID5100. Best of all, the pricing is really good. It's like 10 cents. It's about the same price. I think in quantity it's like six or seven cents. It's the same price as the, you know, one of these nice chalky diodes. Uh, and it does all of the above and gives you that status. And also you can disable it. So it's also like kind of an on off switch too. It's in stock now at DigiKey. Good pick. Ideally. Hi, I'm